Greetings, sufferers. Welcome to episode three of Bits and Chunks here at the Cinematic Suffering Podcast. Tonight we have a very special guest. He's a master of technology, a writer and a musician in bands like Rise from Fire and Deserts of Mars. He's written for graphic novels like Psycom and Clockworks. He's worked in the exciting, high-pressure world of video games, and he's a contributor to the Castle of Horror podcast. He's a lover of horror films and all things genre. It's my good friend, Tony Salvaggio. Tony, I'm thrilled to have you on the podcast, and I really appreciate you coming on. Oh man, it's awesome. It's it's great to kind of be back in touch. Also with all of that, it sounds so much like cooler than the fact I was just playing Final Fantasy from from like the Final Fantasy 5 and listening oh, yeah. to metal, which was which is also different than college, right? <laughs> <laughs> which I think Final Fantasy 5 is from around that time. So basically, you know, that sounds all cool, but I I don't think as much has changed as I might would like, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I say it all the time. The only thing that's 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 changed for me notably is just the uh, just the aching bones and the the slow progression of uh, death. You know, sure. <laughs> the decay, yeah, I mean, the decay yes. of life. Is, <laughs> yeah, it's a big change. But um, yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on, man. We uh, at at the time that we get this uploaded and that people actually see it. Uh, my normal co-host and good friend uh, Jason is going to be in England seeing Iron Maiden for three three shows. He's going to three shows. Oh man, that's Iron awesome! Maiden. Yeah, yeah. So there's a <laughs> ex- there's I'm an Iron Maiden tribute band. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but there's an Iron no, Maiden tribute fine. band playing playing tonight. At, in Are you Austin, going? So. No, I don't think I'll be able to. But it bums me out because I just I just found out that uh, some. Uh, People I and some people I know are in it. I'm like, oh man! I, so I don't know if I'll be able to go, but it's just it's just funny. That's very coincidental. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I bet they're a lot of fun. Have you ever seen them before? No, no. This is like I, this particular one. I've seen another tribute band here in town, but uh, this particular one I think reformed for one night, which makes it even worse that I'm not out there. So, oh <laughs> wow! That's the the perils of uh, adult life what you yeah you don't always get to choose what you want to do yes it is yes it is and and uh, um for me i'm not sure what it's like for you like i have to go into atlanta to see any good shows uh, here i live in the in the suburbs uh <laughs> ironically to be closer to work and um i probably told you this but uh we signed the paperwork and then five seconds later COVID happened and it was like oh, well geez. uh now being close to work is kind of irrelevant. Um, it still worked out. I'm glad we did it, but um, yeah, that was a that was a shitty time. <laughs> yeah, a there's a lot. Time. There's a lot. Uh, you know, when I was, I think at the time I was working for Rooster Teeth and had to transition our whole studio of you know a few hundred people to working from home. So that was interesting for me, though. For for as you know, about your question though, for me, we we live in the suburbs. But it's I'm lucky enough that it's really about thirty minutes tops to go to a show. At all the places okay. I want to go to a show, like if I want to go to San Antonio, it's going to be you know uh, a little while or Houston or Dallas. But I got gotcha. uh, as far as a lot of I mean, we get a lot of local really good bands, and so I'm lucky that all the clubs I kind of want to go to more or less top end, at, you know, anywhere from fifteen to thirty minutes. So I. Uh, oh, it- it's kind of an embarrassment of riches as far as that goes in Austin. Oh yeah, that's 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 good. That's good. And I've heard it's a it's a pretty cool town as far as like you know entertainment and the arts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like it. It's changed, and you know, there's plenty of people who are like it's not the same, and it's not. But it's also, you know, there's there's still really really good clubs. I mean, I just saw, uh, you know, since we're you know, both metalheads from long back. I saw uh, Savage Master recently. Oh, cool. uh, a local band called Mean Mistreater uh, played, which they are amazing. Uh, I love their Crossed name. Hearts. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Uh, Crossed Hearts, which actually was a, a really good uh, band as well. And then before that, I saw Locals Destroyer of Light and Red Mesa, who are, you know, run their own uh, Desert Records label. And so it's, yeah, I mean, on any Damn. given night, you can see uh, a lot of music. So that's cool. 
Um, yes, you know, st stuff closes and, and things change, but I've been happy that, you know, I do, I do miss like, you know, us going way back. I do miss kind of having as the older you get, the, the less of a kind of a crew you have. Oh, so I, do, I do miss like whenever we would kind of just, Hey, we're all going to that shit to a show, uh, in Savannah. That was kind of nice, but luckily, you know, you meet enough. I'm in enough bands that you kind of see all your friends who are all the metalheads, you know, and stone rock yeah. guys and, and chicks at the same, you know, same shows. Yeah, that's that's it, I, I kind of experience the same thing because I've gotten um, somewhat friendly with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, several of the uh, musicians in, in town. I just you know how it is. Artists kind of, you know. <laughs> magnetized to one another i've just kind of made friends absolutely with some of them so it and that's a lot of fun because i i hate going to shows by myself i just i feel awkward i just you know it's, i just don't like it i feel like i need to have somebody to talk to in between bands and stuff i just so it's it's good to go there and actually have a, a community <laughs> there that's into it and and you know this like the the stoner doom rock community they're a tight-knit bunch and they're they're you know they're very welcoming if you're into it. It's not, yeah. it's not a lot of, of pretension when it comes to that kind of music. It kind of is what it is. It's honest. You know, we're all old and craggy and gross and ugly. So. <laughs> well, also, by the way, like anytime I encounter pretension in any kind of like, we're super serious. Like you, you should be serious about your craft, right? Like right, play right. a good show, play good, play, you know, be a professional. But anytime I encounter pretension among peers in the, it's like, look, man, you're singing about like weed and dragons and space <laughs> and dragon smoking stuff weed. and, and, you know, <laughs> desert space people and fantasy, you know, like if you have pretension <laughs> about that, like, are you really in the right place? Are you? How are you spending I'm, your time? <laughs> I'm amazed by that kind of shit too. Like it's, um, I noticed it. I have no, I haven't noticed it at the the last couple of times I've seen them, but, um, like I, there was a couple of, of Guar shows that I went to where it, it was, I was amazed at how like, uh, so many people in the crowd didn't seem to be in on the joke. Like you realize this is the oh silliest goodness. shit ever. I and, can't and believe you know me. I'm the biggest Guar. <laughs> ever but sure. I mean, like like there was this one dude that was mean mugging everybody and he had like <laughs> ronald mcdonald no shit like ronald mcdonald hair the color and the texture and he was wearing really short shorts like you know like short shorts daisy dukes and stuff and he was fat as hell and you know i mean and i'm not believe me i'm not yeah. body shaming anybody or any of that kind of shit but it's like dude you you put that on, you saw what you look like and you know, and we're going, we're about to see the silliest shit that that's imaginable. And you're sitting there trying to look all tough and stuff. Like you, you got to pick a thing. <laughs> was, was he covered in like guar goo? No, he wasn't. Oh, Cause it, see it, that would, that would be the ultimate. If you're like me mugging people, but then you're like covered with guardness. That yeah, I think would it, be the ultimate. I would, I would just, I, that's the kind of stuff that makes me really laugh because it, it's so, like you should like I'm serious about even the the sci-fi stuff I'm singing about, right? Yeah. And and you, but also not not being able to take yourself take it back a little bit and just being too serious about yourself. Like you miss out on so much fun in life. I think. I I totally agree, man. I think it's a um you know I think it's a good way to go through life, and it's it's the same kind of thing as like we've talked about this this before. You know, kind of looking back and and thinking about people that you allowed kind of in your circle and and allowing them to get into your head and kind of allowing that yeah. kind of negativity to to you realize just how many opportunities you you missed for fun by just you know kind of being that way being too serious being just shitty and negative or whatever it is you know it's... and that's that's also you know like you know this your podcast is you know primarily horror and it's the same thing like yeah. there's people who take horror super seriously and again you should take the craft seriously and and there is some stuff that's that's really serious and it's dealing with like a lot of really serious topics but right. also like 
if you look at the expanse of the horror genre, there's if you really enjoy it, you got to kind of be along for the ride to be yeah. not as serious. Like yeah, I can oh, watch, I can watch The Exorcist, and I can watch Critters and Critters Two, and and, yeah. and they each have a different level. But also, like that that and also that that kind of you know horror and metal crossover that happens a lot. It happened a Definitely. lot in the eighties. Like all of that stuff kind of intermingles and in taking. I just people who take themselves way too seriously about that. It's just like, why? What's wrong with having fun? Like well, that's how I always operate, and I'm always amazed when people yeah. don't quite have that same tack. Like, you realize what you're, what we're enjoying, right? <laughs> right, right. So it's bizarre. Like, well, and and it's, and it's funny that you you mentioned kind of the cross pollination of of metal and horror movies because they are. It's like it's this. It's a lot of in a lot of ways. It's the same audience. They're just exactly you know, like. They're just as opinionated. They're just as like, you know, how many times have you had this, like the exact same conversation about a band as you did a horror movie where it's like, did you see this new uh, band slash horror movie? It was really cool. I kind of liked it. That sucked. That was dog shit. Like people are just that cut and dry with their opinions about it. They're just as visceral kind of uh, uh, hate about it. Um, me and Jason, like our philosophy when we go into this is like we're horror fans and we're creative. So we're even if we're kind of crapping on people's movies, we always try to do it with the caveat that uh, we respect these people as artists and we're not trying mm-hmm. to hurt anybody's feelings. And we understand that it's got to be incredibly difficult to make an effective horror movie. It's probably you know, it's probably like making a good comedy. Like it's really hard to scare people. It's really hard to make people laugh. And it's really hard to, to keep people entertained consistently for the runtime of a whole movie. That's, that's like a lot of times you probably don't even know if it's, you're dealing with a masterwork or a piece of crap until you edit it. (laughs) Well, you know, on that same note, like it's a, for me, it's also a small industry and I work like in that, so I, I try not to do that. In fact, I've been on, a, yeah. not to mean this, is, make this as a plug, but I've been on Jim Towns, you know, our friend Jim's oh, podcast, cool. Borgo, Borgo Pass. He has one about universal horror. And they started, some of those guys started calling me the Duke of Positivity because I really yeah. hate, like, it's hard to make a movie. It's hard yeah. to make, it's hard to make anything artistic. It's hard yeah. to make an album. It's hard to make a movie. And so I really try, look, there's tons of stuff I dislike, but I really try if we're going to do it like on our podcast uh, to to find the good in it and to really, you know, I don't and I don't mean be disingenuous like, no, but I hear you. It's super hard to make anything worth a damn <laughs> it's, and it's yeah. harder all the time. And so yeah. I really try to approach it. And, you know, I you won't see me posting like if this you know, like on the, on the, on the internet, because a, you know, that could be, uh, somebody I know because I work in, you know, I do stuff in film from time to time and everything like that. And it is hard. Like, even like you, you mentioned clockworks, like that's a good example for that, for whatever reason, that book took over a decade to get into the U (laughs) S that's not normal (laughs) for comics. Like it, all kinds of stuff. And then our editor uh, that we got, which was our fifth or sixth editor on that book, (laughs) uh, ended up rewriting huge chunks of it without, like, I didn't, I knew there was going to be some changes, but I didn't realize the extent of it. And boy, was that a bitter pill when I realized what he changed. Now, the artwork is beautiful, and I still think it's a strong book, but it's not the book I had originally written and that that stuff happens all the time there's an you know yeah. that's analogous to what happens in in hollywood you oh know, i've had friends brutal. who who were you know there was a uh, <laughs> it's a pretty famous one where they were uh the storyline was about a guy with cancer and his friends are trying to uh you know get him to a movie and they and the executives were like man cancer that's a real bummer could he just be like kind of sick like no the whole idea is that he he has cancer and he needs to yeah. do that. That's the thrust of why they're, they're trying so hard for him. If he just had a cold or flu, you know, 
Yeah, it's not it's, and that's it, not the same. And so all that stuff, man, the making making anything and getting, especially if it's if it's the more people you get involved and the bigger the funding, the more oh. hands hands are in it. And yeah, you know, and that's well, why like a lot of the horror right. we enjoy, like a lot of the weird just gonzo stuff was some of the best because no the, one's fucking with it. it. We're just like, yeah, go make that thing. And then you yeah. come out. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not as great. But but that passion to just make something is really, oh. uh, you know, that's that's where it's at for me. Definitely. And, and it, you, you hit on something that I, I constantly feel and, and um, you know, that I say more and more as we, as we do this, this podcast, as it grows is that, um, you know, like that, all these big screen, like Marvel movies, I've, I've, I've always been kind of so, so interested in them anyway. I've, I've obviously as a cartoonist and a creative, I've seen all the, the big ones and I've seen a lot of the Marvel movies, but I just can't, I never could get all that excited about them. And especially in the last decade or so, they just, just waning interest in that. But with horror movies, even if it's a bad one, you can tell that, that there was so much, you know, heart and, and like you pointed out, just a, a kind of a lack of that, that, uh, you know, editorial control that they have over it. It's a lot pure piece. Like, you know, and I'm sure we enjoy a lot of the same movies, like something like uh, Psycho Gore Man. Like that couldn't exist. Oh, yeah. in, in I, the... I know some of those guys and they oh, are I'm genuine. Sure. They are genuine. Like we want to make this us. I, some of their other stuff was even, you know, I liked even better than that movie, but like the, the, the fact that they decided, well, no, go ahead. Like the Astron Six, do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like the fact that they just decided to make power, you know, Power Ranger villain <laughs> costumes. Like I kind of wanted that movie to be almost more Power Rangers y yeah. in some ways. Uh yeah. and not not that I dislike what they made, but all of that stuff, like who does that? Right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's a um, definitely a passion project because you know you look at the behind the scenes and and there's the director who's comes from a, a special effects background, but there's the director like airbrushing all these practical <laughs> yeah. effects and stuff, and and you know just just a real has a real love for that kind of stuff. I think one of the first things that, that I can't remember the order that I've I've seen his work in, and I'm I'm blanking on his name. It's he, he's. Um, I'll, I'll think of it later, look at it, but I'm a big fan of his work and I loved all the Astron six stuff, but some of the first stuff that I, uh, that I saw him direct was that video for the Cybertronic spree. I saw that and I was just scratching oh, yeah, my yeah. head, but also like smiling ear to ear like this. I, I love it when I find that kind of wacky, just weird stuff like that. It's kind of, it, it's a fun find because, I don't know. It's it, it, everything else is so polished and and overthought in the mainstream. And you know, also the, there's there's stuff kind of in that same field of like like a Turbo Kid, where yeah. the gore is just. But what I love about Turbo Kid and and stuff I like also what I like about what they're doing is it's not ironic. Um, we've kind of yeah. grown into this irony state where, and look if if people enjoy something, I. I'll be honest, like I've said it on my on our podcast a lot, but like I don't like the term guilty pleasure because I really have gotten like once I'm an adult and I don't have the kind of the peer pressure of high school anymore or even college. Yeah. But I realize, hey, I shouldn't have had that peer pressure because whatever, uh, you know, how many of those people do you see again? I have to worry about. But either way, yeah. like I don't I feel I have two caveats. Are you hurting yourself or others? So, like, if there's a director who's hurting people and doing really bad stuff, I have yeah. a hard time supporting them, but or people involved. But if it's not hurting yourself or other people, like, enjoy whatever you like. Life's so short, and we've learned that yeah. even more lately. And uh, so, I, I like what I like about their stuff is it's not ironic. Like, even Turbo Kid takes all the stuff we dug and uh isn't it it doesn't point it out it's not because too often it's like hey that's a reference right wink and it's kind of this wink at oh the camera. i hate that yeah i hate and they don't really right do that movie. no yeah they no, don't really it's 
and I, I love that kind of stuff. I love that there's people out there making things that are not ironic or supposed to like, you're supposed to instantly grasp because I, I also like that it kind of makes you dig a little bit. If you weren't maybe steeped in that, like we were yeah. that if you want and it, it, but it doesn't force you. So it doesn't say like, Hey, you gotta, you know, like the Marvel movies where you do, some people do feel like they have to see like, two miniseries and something else or whatever. But like you watch yeah. something like Turbo Kid or Psycho Goreman or whatever, if you know about where those practical effects come from and what the references are and, you know, weird Power Rangers stuff and it enhances your viewing. Yeah. But you're not, you don't have to watch that to also enjoy it. And I think that's some of the yeah. best stuff. Oh, I, I, I do too. And it's one of the many things I like about uh Turbo Kid is is I love that movie. It's just um it's you know so I, every I totally agree with everything you said and, and it's just everything about Turbo Kid is it's like it's full of this gore, but it's you you just have to laugh at it. I mean movies like Well, it's in uh, the same vein as gore, right? Like that oh, over yeah. the top. Like I can't take this if you take that seriously, you're missing kind of the joy of it. Yeah, you're mentally ill if you take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, now, granted, some people think we're mentally ill for watching it. So true, you true. Know. <laughs> they don't understand the they don't understand the catharsis from it. And and sure. I always resented that so much that that judgmental kind of thing. And it's um, I know I'm bouncing around. And you said a lot of stuff, and I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, like now that um you know kind of quote unquote geek culture has kind of entered the mainstream and the one thing that i do like about it is that there that judgmental thing is not there like you know it, it, what you said was dead on about uh, we're adults now so who cares what the jocks think all those guys have the same uh type 2 diabetes that i'm trying not to get and the same <laughs> right. plantar fasciitis so we're all kind of on an even keel now but it's it, in some odd circumstances, it's almost like it's an identity. It's become this, it's, it's, it's gone kind of almost the opposite direction to where you, people could, you get the idea sometimes that people say that they're into geek stuff, that they're just trying to, they're trying to find some kind of identity. Like, it, it, you sure. know, it's not, then it's not like well, I question people, but it's like, you're not really into this stuff because you don't know, get any of my references. <laughs> Look, I don't, I, I issue gatekeeper culture in general oh, I too. And I, and I, because my approach, again, this is not for everybody. I'm purely, when I say these things, I'm purely talking about myself. My approach is always, you can say like, oh, you don't know such and such will name blah, right? You're right. Or, or you can go, oh, if you like, you're at this show, right? Uh, metal show, or you're at this movie. If you like this thing, obviously you've shown up and paid your cash, right? So yeah, there's that that the older you get, the the harder that is to separate yourself from cash and time to get to a place. So if you're yeah. if you're there, uh, wow. then instead you could go, hey, I think you would like X, Y, and Z, yeah, as well, and throw those seeds out there because that that's how you get more cool people. And if they don't want to listen to it or watch it whatever like i go home and you know okay i still have all those dvds and like streaming and like i can watch that and it didn't affect me but how much yeah. cooler is it? instead of just because like when i was getting into metal and punk if i had met people who were that way i would have not been into that <laughs> like well, oh you, you haven't seen the exorcist right like if it's horror like you are yeah like, i i probably would have been like wow what a jerk i'll go watch something else you know, so you have those choices that you can make. Yeah. And, I, you know, for some people, I get that there's a little bit of kind of gatekeeping keeps a little bit of cohesion. But I don't know. Again, like I, the older I get, the less I care about that either. Oh, because I don't have to fight for my right. And I've already fought that fight, I guess. Well, yeah. It's, I, mean, <laughs> I feel like I have. Well, I mean, you know, like we, uh, you know, just a bit of backstory, like uh, Tony and I were, were friends back in art school. We went to, uh, to Savannah College of Art and Design together. And I'm sure that the, you know, that, that, that the tone has changed dramatically since mm -hmm. we went there. But like, 
I was amazed. Like, not only was there a lot of of people just within the town that resented us for baffling reasons. Like, oh, I'm so sorry that we're bringing all this uh, culture and money into your into your you know into your town. But also, there was just this like com- competitive petty infighting with a lot of our peers too. So a lot of times it kind of felt like it was good to find your, your, um, you know, kind of your circle, but, and then even that could break down because there's people shit talking even within that. So I, I, humans are an odd bunch and, and like you you brought up, man, I less tolerance for it. The older I get. Well, it's funny too, because I, I have a pretty decent story. I don't, I don't know what your audience is. So hopefully my ramblings will be fine. (laughs) <laughs> so it, but uh you know when you, when you talk about, about go ahead though it's when you talk about everyone. finding your tribe you know we did find our tribe and our tribe was metalheads who also dug horror right for the most right part. that precise that tended and that that crossover was really 80s and 90s especially i think because uh, i think it still continues but that really was you got a lot of bands uh especially early death metal kind of really played into that with the cut definitely with, you know and a lot of metal. I mean, you had Anthrax singing constantly about Stephen King novels, right? Like, yeah, that's that, Dredd, all that stuff yeah. was crossover. But yeah, what was amusing to me because I always I was grew up in a tiny, I mean, really seriously tiny town uh, in the middle of in nowhere, Miss, Mississippi, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm from Texas, but my family, you know, my stepdad was from Mississippi. I lived in Mississippi because that's where we moved. Uh, I tried to get back out to Texas as much as possible, um, but you know, and that's where I live now. But the whole thing was su- that surprised me was being not exactly outcast. I think that's too broad of a term. But you know, we didn't, we weren't the skaters, and we weren't the hippies, and we weren't the kind of more uptight architecture students. Tend to be a little, and graphic designers to tend to be a little bit more uptight and more slick. You know, yeah. but but what's amazing about this this kind of conversation is years later. Uh, you know, because we were just the detritus, the, the leftovers <laughs> of all this. We were the shake of all of these uh, different groups, and we just found yeah. our tribe, and it was enjoyable. You know, like we like comics, yeah. and we we you know hung out. But what I found out later was I was talking to a friend, you know, time a couple years removed from hanging out, uh, or maybe maybe it was actually when I was just spending all my time in the computer lab because I was going to school for animation. But to him, because we all ate at the same kind of, you know, common table, to him on the outcasts, because we always thought of ourselves as the outcasts of all the, you know, we didn't fit in with any other groups. He was like, what do you mean? You guys had like the biggest table and it was just seemed like chaos. (laughs) 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 so he thought of us as this like miss misanthrope chaos regime (laughs) (laughs) so it probably that's a much cooler uh way to say it than it probably was but it it was cool oh it was totally we were just we were all just like i don't know why we don't fit in but i guess let's go play some more turbo graphics and and (laughs) mortal Kombat and listen to listen to uh you know, thrash metal and Nocturnus or whatever, any oh, kind of doom God. metal that was out. And then like, and and you were drawing comics and I was in the computer lab. Like none of that stuff was cool in the same sense, but evidently to an outsider. And this is what's fascinating about, you know, kind of these groups, these tribes we form into about loving horror, because to us, we're all the weirdos, Right. Yeah. But then there's a horror convention and all the weirdos are there. And, you know, I've seen multiple guests that, you know, been in green rooms for doing comics. Like, you know, I'm not super famous, but, you know, I've been as a guest at different cons and universally, a lot of the guests are like the horror community. And in some ways, some of the metal community are some of the best people. Like I have the most fun at those conventions. Um there's it. always outliers, but but it's in general that seems to be kind of like, oh, yeah, I love to come here and they treat me well, and and it's this whole kind of thing, and that's you know it's it's funny because even though it's more mainstream, like there's still kind of that, oh, we're the outcast, even though that's kind of not yeah. really true. Like I mean, there's whole Dungeons and Dragons 
Judges of Dragons used to be satanic panic, like pariah oh, yeah. stuff, right? And now there's like really, really, really famous Dungeons and Dragons groups and and yeah. who are very way more attractive than any of us were. <laughs> oh, I know. We were I know. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's it's like it's weird, man. It's 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 kind of surreal to think of the term geek. It doesn't it literally doesn't mean what it used to. It used to be oh, a yeah. total pejorative term as it was not. Yeah. No one no one self diagnosed <laughs> As a well, geek. it's it kind of comes from like people in you know anime circles, which I still watch tons. Uh, you know, originally like otaku in in Japan was like shut in basement dwelling, horrible, smelly person. <laughs> like it, that that was the, like, the gist of, of the the term was shut like shut in, uh, if I remember <laughs> correctly. Like so, you know, had all of that connotation. Social lever. <laughs> yeah, and so people, but now it's like you could say that and kind of it's like the same way geek is now you know hey or you know that i'm a, i'm a movie geek like yeah that's okay and i prefer look i mean in in a lot of ways there there are people who took that and ran with it so that some of the upper tier geekdoms have become the geek version of the jocks that that shoved us yeah. in the lockers and that's a shame and that really bugs me but I would rather have a a world where people can enjoy things uh, in a more mainstream way and pick and choose what you like. Play D and D or don't. Watch Doctor Who. Doctor Who was like, wait, that's on PBS, nerd. You yeah, know? yeah. And I so like, like and, but but it's hugely popular. And I I don't have that. Man, it used to be cooler. I'm like, that's cool that people can enjoy things. Like, why let's let's just let people enjoy things that's pretty great man you know the yeah, fact that we have our horror movie podcast that people listen to is also like wow let's all enjoy these things together that's pretty amazing it it really is and it's it it's i mean like right now it's given us a way to you know kind of reconnect and and, and talk about this kind of stuff and and you know maybe share it with an audience in our case it's going to it's a small one but this is we're still starting out but honestly i don't really you know i don't want to say i don't care but i'm i'm enjoying it just as much regardless of how many clicks and likes and all that stuff we yeah. get so it's well it's, for um, for it's Castle fun. of Horror, our whole thing was just we were started to be get scattered as we took different jobs and stuff like that. Yeah. And so it was a way for us to reconnect. We all liked horror, except for uh, my friend Jason's wife, Julia. At first, we were just like, hey, well, you know, three more white dudes doing a podcast. Is that going to be compelling? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Can you, you also hang out with us a lot. We were good friends. Would you like to be the color commentary? Uh, and you know, add a different perspective as a non-horror, hardcore horror person. Right. Um, and that ended up being really cool. The thing we get the most comments about is, you know, we've been pretty low key as far as our production value is not as slick, uh, especially in the early days. Like sometimes I'd have to dial in on my phone because of, you know, I was in a studio all night or whatever. Right. So we, it started out the, the the people who have enjoyed our podcast have said, well, what I like about it is it sounds like friends of mine hanging out after we were watching a movie. Exactly. And that's really what it was supposed to be. Uh, it's not scholarly. Like I love scholarly stuff. Um, it's not as scholarly. We try to bring, you know, I try to bring what knowledge into it uh, because we love, we are passionate about these things. Yeah. But that's, that's really why we started was just, Hey, let's hang out. And you know, we've done over 400 episodes now, and it's that's you know, amazing. That's cool for that's cool for us. It it works for us, and we're again. There's a lot of things we could do to probably be more professional or more, you know, slick and really sell more ads and all that stuff. But that was never the intent of what we do, and that's kind of. It's it's an it's nice to always not have to monetize. Like yes, it would be yeah. awesome if I made a salary off of that. But it's also kind of nice to not have to monetize every single artistic aspect of what you do. I mean, I already have to worry yeah. about it. Look, I love playing in my bands, but you know, I'm the person doing all of that. 
so it's nice to have something kind of pure you know yeah. that you just do you hang out with your friends and do that and you know i get Absolutely. and that's kind of and then that sounds more or less that's, that's why you guys started too right like pretty much yeah yeah i mean um we just we both needed um you know uh, an, an a, a, a kind of some form of artistic expression i mean it was mm-hmm. uh, we st- we started doing the podcast as as a uh, audio only and the premise back then was <clears throat> excuse me it was an uh, a horror on netflix a to z like we're just gonna watch mm-hmm. every movie on horror movie on netflix from a to z and we're gonna review them and it it became tedious and it became kind of like homework and then you know there were some personal tragedies on my side that kind of ended it and and gotcha. you know and then when um you know, like similar things kind of happened to Jason later on. And he was looking for something. I, I, I think that, um, you know, I never really asked him specifically why, but I, I the, the band thing, he just wasn't feeling that anymore. He wanted to do something different. And he, um, he reached out to me and asked if I wanted to get the cinematic suffering podcast back together. And I couldn't say yes, quick enough. <laughs> like I was just, right. I, so it came in at, at just the right time. So the, the, you know, the reason that we're doing this is just because we love horror. We love, um, there's a, a big MST three K influence with what we do. And we wear that on our sleeves. It's obvious with a lot of our content that, okay, that's what they're doing is, is, you know, that they're trying to provide commentary for the movie, but we also look and we also, uh, you know, do playthroughs of horror video games and, and that kind of thing. And, and it's going to evolve as it goes. We might kind of narrow that down a little bit. So that's a little more focused, but um, you know, mm-hmm. th- right now we're just, you know, kind of horror movies, horror video games, commentary, you know, and, and just making it fun. And, and uh, there's a big aspect that's like what you were talking about with your podcast is, is just dudes in the room, you know, busting on the movie in a good natured way. Like we, like I said, we never try to be mean spirited about it, but. Sure. Yeah. We, uh, you know, I, and I like that too. I've, um, and I like, bringing in you know and everybody on our you know since it's four of us uh you know my friend drew who does the comic book halloween man uh, oh cool he you know he brings his own we all have our different things that we dig so we all when we're talking about what movies to do uh because you know it's kind of interesting that you talk about how uh you know started as netflix a to z for us it's kind of what we all bring to the table and then kind of vote on it but vote is probably even more rigid than what actually happens. Uh, and then we, we kind of agree, uh, you know, recently our, before we were taking a break right now, but recently we did all of the screen movies. That was a whole, like, let's do that as a retrospective. So we'll do retrospectives, but then also, you know, I tend to be the more like Asian horror kind of person or metal and horror kind of person. Uh, Jason loves Euro trash uh drew is the biggest friday the 13th fan you know cool. he's got he's got jason tattoos and and just nice. in his ex, he has a really expansive knowledge of horror as well you know it's it's more than just that so we all kind of bring in julia likes more kind of thrillers or like if it's too gross she's not about that so we try to we all kind of play to our strengths and bring stuff to cool. the table um and that's made it really interesting and fascinating um in that but it those kind of rules also people always ask like what movie are you doing next or whatever they tend to think yeah. it's it's way <laughs> it's way behind the scenes it's not nearly as slick as all that <laughs> it'll yeah. be like us in a, in a facebook chat going what about this well i've seen this recently you know yeah uh, although yeah. i am kind of sad to be honest uh that we're not that we're on break right now because i just uh Chattanooga Film Festival. Again, this isn't a plug, but it is because it's something I'm enjoying. Uh, has, has been virtual for the past since lockdown. They pivoted. And, and is that, uh, that's Fantastic Fest, right? I don't know. This is Chattanooga Film Festival. Oh, okay. That's I gotcha. gotcha. Uh, and so and so they've done a virtual thing, and I just logged on to that. So I just watched like a documentary about uh Stephen King movies. And then cool. they had like a real trashy Skinamax movie last night called nice. Obsession. Um, 
And then <laughs> I was watching also a, a documentary that's close to home because, you know, we grew up in the height of the satanic panic yeah. about uh, uh, it's about a one of the big satanic panic uh, things, uh, you know, that happened a, a book called uh, Michelle Remembers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and I just started. I haven't finished it, but uh, it's called Satan Wants You. And so I'm I usually when I'm doing those the, the film festivals, I'm also trying to bring uh, people into like, hey, here's a school virtual fest. It kind of democratizes things. You don't have to fly to Chattanooga for the virtual part. Yeah. And genre of film, you know, is still like we said, we try to find our tribe. So I am kind of sad that we're taking a break for the reason I mentioned it here is because there's all these cool movies that they're showing that usually I'll do recommendations and I'll try to bring light. Cause there's also a lot of indie filmmakers that play, you know, play their movies at festivals. And I've met, I've met really good friends now uh, virtually or going to fantastic fest. That you mentioned uh, just hanging out and, you know, meeting yeah. some director. I mean, I'm good friends with the, uh, you know, we don't see each other all the time. The guy who made this movie called Norwegian Ninja, you know, <laughs> you just because we like the same stuff. Like he's from Norway and we went, we, we visited Norway, we hung out with him and the producer, but the whole idea was just like, Hey, we like the same stuff. And we just started hanging out at the film festival. And cool. You know, that's, that's just that kind of stuff again. Not, and that's not name dropping. It's just like, that's what's cool about these fests and about bringing indie film, because I think some of that passion, uh, you know, so much stuff that we picked off of the VHS shelves back in the day was just somebody who's like, you know what, I'm going to make this like, you know, you don't get deadly spawn coming from a, a you know, <laughs> our critters from a major, major studio. No, you know? no, like, they'd, la I they'd mean, laugh at it. But, you know, and the fact that these movies exist, make them that much more special because there's, there's this, this feeling of it's for us this is for us like i i remember sitting down watching um the the grindhouse movies the tarantino uh, rodriguez mm -hmm. movies and uh, like i my genuine thought was like it was nice of them to make this just for me <laughs> they, they, <this laughs> right, right. Be a money making venture that they made a film specifically for me oh yeah so often when you see something you're just like oh how did you know how did you know yeah that, <laughs> i'm touched uh, Thank you for this, uh, for beaming this directly into my brain, because nobody else would possibly uh, want this, uh, even though we know that's not true, right? But, right, I, you know, right. a lot of those, a lot of film festivals are where, where a lot of indie filmmakers really have to push hard and kind of get the word out. So I do enjoy that. I, I love, and I love when they're, now that there can be virtual fests, that like we have enough streaming services you know the fact that we can connect you know this way same yeah. idea so yeah. i'm i'm really enjoying when i can go to a virtual film festival um i recommend seeking those out because you may see something that may not get dis distribution or it may take a year to get distribution like you never know uh yeah so that's why i like to but it it kind of reminds me of those vhs days where you would see something on the shelf like some and now you just cover. do it. now. Now we do that with Tubi, right? Like you just go to yeah. Tubi or Amazon. Uh, those are my two big ones where I go to find just random stuff. Yeah. And and you'll just search through and go, what the heck? And yeah, uh, like, you know, I'll, I'll go on whole rabbit holes where it starts suggesting me stuff, and I'll oh, just yeah. go. And and it feel a lot of film festivals kind of if you can do that, especially virtual. But it's always fun to go. And you know, now that we can it's a little bit safer to go to in-house, you know, in-person yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, virtual ones democratize that. So it, it has that flavor of uh, kind of this, uh, you know, what's, what's, if I scratch the surface, what's behind there? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, another thing I like about the, you know, Chattanooga one is they also set up, they start to set up uh, discord servers and stuff. So oh, that yeah. you can get, if you can't be there, you can hang out with, with your tribe. 
right? Right. Like it, like and, could, it's a side community that's that's yeah. And I thought like as fun as as the what you're seeing on screen at times, I'm sure. Yeah, and I I commend them for that. Like I said, I, you know, I didn't come here to plug that, but I also, but because we're talking about like all these things that we can do now, uh, it just reminded me because I, you know, and it just started, so, uh, you know, I'm spending my weekend probably late night, and they did something really nice this year too, uh, which I think you would dig, is they have midnight movies every night that are secret. Oh yeah, cool. Like back in the. So, um like at the Alamo draft house used to do that a lot. didn't they? Yeah. 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 So, uh, in fact, cool. that, that, uh, obsession movie obsession, a taste, a taste for fear from 1988, which by the way, I, I <laughs> thought I'd seen most erotic thriller kind of things. Cause yeah. hey, you grew up trying to sneak and watch rated R movies when you're a kid. Yeah, right. It's like all you had now. I mean, now you could just stream whatever. <laughs> so nobody, I don't even know if I, if I was a parent, I mean, there's no like, don't watch bad movies like it, it can I be on your phone they, i don't know how they <laughs> navigate that actually it's like you know i mean that's I mean, that's a whole other rabbit hole but that seems like you know oh man <laughs> like you can just see the most just degenerate filth imaginable with a button clip yeah so this movie obsession like it i was it's it was amazing it's this neon garish <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like it's like you take all of think of every Skin and Max movie you've ever seen combined with something <laughs> like Looker and uh, Runaway, and just boil it down to a syrup of Skin and Max, <laughs> just a, and then just maybe the, put that in a spoon <laughs> and boil that. It it was, I mean, but I love again, I love finding just like I thought I'd seen most of that right. And finding some weird, and it's not going to be for every. I mean, I, you know, horror and you know all the things we love. It's not going to be for ev- for everyone. Oh, so yeah. there's probably a lot of people who are like, "Whoa, that is you know, sex this way and this portrayal of this." <laughs> like, it's, you yeah, got, you got to go. Like, look, I get you, but this was '88, and we weren't right. thinking like, about those things. And it's good to put in perspective. Like, yes, I can't. I, I'm not justifying these things. I'm not saying that it's oh, enjoyable I... because, but, but again, you know, the, the futuristic erotic thriller of 88 is just its own. You got to kind of look at it and go, well, you know, in the same way that a gangster movie, a black and white gangster movie has its own pattern or, or yeah. movies from the the fifties have a, way different view of like oh it's you know it's, most women are secretaries well, <laughs> or or I mean, prostitutes right oh, like it goes on and on uh, that era. I mean, just, okay just just the banter like just take your your typical cabin in the woods or you know like your your uh young people getting ready to go off somewhere and get murdered by the, a slasher kind of movie just their banter through today's lens is like holy smokes man you can't, you can't yeah, don't, say don't. anything like that now we don't do that. And I'm not, and again, I'm not even one of those people who laments, like, we can't do anything anymore. It's like, come on, give me a break. Well, come you can on, do yeah, whatever that's... you want. But but I also, you know, contextually, if you can contextualize it, like, you can kind of understand. Some people can, some people can't. And I'm not a person, by the way, who says, I I can't believe you can't handle this. Like, yeah. you should, like, again, life is too short. I choose what I put in my brain. A lot more yeah. selectively now. So, like, if a horror movie is a little bit too real, right. I, at this stage of my life, I tend to watch less, ser- perhaps like a serial killer movie. This is like this could be a serial killer that's on your on the news, right? I tend to watch less of that. And if you want to watch yeah. that again, well, I, I've kind of met some people who are kind of a little bit more creepy about serial killer stuff. <laughs> Well, that's okay you know, you know as long as again yeah. as long as you're not hurting yourself and others but i also understand that like I, i'm not gonna try to you're not cool if you don't watch this or that yeah but i also that's feel like silly. the flip side is like you do kind of have to contextualize it and you, you don't have to give it a pass but i think understanding our cinematic past is it's worth because i think that again there's stuff that's in each 
like kind of thing like even even something like that where it's like super erotic thrillery has this like you can learn from like what that era was trying to say right uh, and I, th- I always find that's fascinating and something look something's commercial art and some things are just like let's get as much naked bodies up on screen as possible I mean, <laughs> like, it, like, like it, give me like like i know i yeah let me, let's yeah, call it like, like we it know is. what this is and uh, if there was one thing that i would kind of um that that i am kind of an old fart about when it comes to, to some of the newer movies i do uh, it's it may not be the uh, you know the best thing to admit but i do kind of miss some of those those that trashiness of some of the well, old movies is just the nudity for the sake of nudity was kind of fun back in the i in, i under i absolutely understand uh how things change and why maybe like let's make people feel comfortable making those movies as well like let's less let's have less exploitation because there are a lot of exploitation like oh no well you have to get nude in front of the camera to get this job like bad time like that come on not no that all, we when, when there's no way to justify it but yeah. there is also a, a lot of news and a lot of there's a lot of articles written about kind of the the chasteness of movies and also the dichotomy of uh and you could go way deeper like we could talk about all this stuff for for a long time is the dichotomy of why is violence okay and nudity isn't yeah and because nudity like you know nudity is a part of life and maybe not puritanical life but it you know and and why and that was always the weird thing about Europe is is they would go hey yeah we have all the sex in our films why do you have so much gun violence <laughs> right right like, right it's, like it's why why thing. wait you know why why in Britain like you can get slapped with a really hard R rating for like a headbutting somebody like a headbutt was like a big deal <laughs> it's because they'll but, give you a Manchester kiss in a second if. <laughs> but like that that will get you you know that in your movie will get you a uh you know and then you know i had to deal with that in video games you talk about you know part of my like the german version of this game i worked on crusader where i did qa uh it's got i mean the (laughs) crusader the game has like people caught on fire and explode everything explodes uh a guy (laughs) like a gun that can melt people (laughs) <laughs> but in the German in the German version, so that you didn't have to get a hard R video game, which meant you probably weren't going to sell that many copies. Everybody just kind of gets hit and goes. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird to test the German version because people just kind of fall over like they like you drink darted them. Whereas like, we're running it- through with gleefully setting people on fire and like melting them into it, exploding them into pieces. And, well, kind of but no nudity, if, right? No like, nudity. Whew, that would be bad. Something it, 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 you saying that kind of makes me wonder how something like Wolfenstein plays in Germany. They're probably like, oh, that oh, doesn't get to no, 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 no. You don't that. Yeah, no, you, you, you we, get a we'll heavily. A hard sense. You can read about. <laughs> you can read about that. That in particular was not. Uh, probably they got like a version of like the Nintendo, the Nintendo, the SNES version of Wolfenstein has like most of all, most of that removed. They probably got like a version of that. Yeah, they were um, real uncomfortable. I recall with the, the well, the I mean, uh, you know, can't blame them. And again, no. when I when I talk about these things, you know, I I think we should you cannot forgive or give a pass to the exploitation that happened. In, in a lot of these and you no, should it, we should no. be we should progress to a level where like what's comfortable on screen what's comfortable for people to film you know don't be a creepy weirdo jerk right that's what that's, that's kind yeah. of right but but there is a a interesting uh dichotomy and some people are even saying like it leads to kind of worse ideas about kind of a puritanical nature which is funny because we again we talked about satanic panic Mm -hmm. uh kind of stuff so kind of going back in time to that era in some ways is strange to me um but i you know i don't again i'm just a person who enjoys this stuff and i know we're talking and and we have an audience that we're you know projecting to uh but again like i'm not if somebody's like i am not down with sex scenes and i don't think that you should you know 
is there something weird with you where you that's something you're seeking out i'm like well that's not what i'm saying you know and i i think everybody should have their comfort level the same with horror like i didn't look even back in the day uh we talk about like the vhs days there were you know we didn't have streaming we didn't have tubi so if you wanted to get the really just off the wall stuff <laughs> you had to find the right video store it. and you also or or you had the there were those printed catalogs and yeah, i remember those. metal metal memorabilia usually and then some of them some of the er, the, the mid 80s like late 90s or early 90s ones would sell like you could, if you want you could buy like uh I, I remember one zine this wasn't everywhere but you know, in amongst the horror community, people were passing around these catalogs, and uh, you know, metal T-shirts as well. But also like yeah. crime scene photos. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and like, just um... like it's so weird to think about that now, right? Like this is where I'm I'm old. <laughs> but but if you want, like <laughs> I wasn't, you know, you had to if you wanted to get Dead Alive for a long time, you know, Peter Jackson, uh, you had to to order it from a catalog. But even then, I wasn't gonna be someone who ordered uh like the guinea pig series i don't know if you're familiar right with that. no like, i'm i've known or like, like a real kind of that which got labeled as a snuff film even though it wasn't but it was close enough to matter like the, I, <laughs> that, you know. well it's because charlie sheen's coked out it. Uh, uh, i've well, got on it <laughs> sure i mean that federal investigation kind of stuff but i yeah. i was not a person who like, i was you know i watched toxic avenger and lots of gory i mean i wasn't a huge gore hound but also you know was gleefully crazy uh again now i'm kind of inured to where i'm like you know okay yeah you're shocking me whatever if yeah you know, but I mean, but uh what, what, I mean, that was the way you got that stuff but even then i wasn't like there was an like extreme was truly level underground back then yeah there was an ex there was an extreme level even i was like nah you know what I think I'm okay not putting that in my brain. And I'm, I'm. It's, it's funny you say that because I like I've, I've made a lot of the same choices as I've, as I've gotten older. I think that I'm sure it's like this for a lot of people. Is as you get older and you start to experience actual loss and actual, yeah, real world, um, you know, kind of tragedy, and and you see things that are like, wow, if, <laughs> you know, just. For instance, just taking care of somebody in a hospice situation, well, mm -hmm. that's that's all the horror imagery that you're going to need for a lifetime. So anything that kind of brings that back up or or goes there just isn't necessarily all that interesting for me. I'm not I'm not squeamish about it, but like for me, it's there's got to be a, a sense of creativity and dark sense of humor for me to really like it. Like I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not scared of them but i'm also not it not all that interested in films like a serbian film and and oh, no, that's, I'm out. <laughs> stuff like i'm that. out it's, for that like yeah like I, I'm, I feel... I'm, it's just like and there's there's a certain offset of the or the horror community that that's the stuff they love is the stuff that's like an endurance test to get through and that's it's that's not really appealing for me i want to be entertained i want to i want to laugh at how darkly uh just humorous this stuff is it, it should be a catharsis where you kind of face your fears not not mm -hmm. take on stuff that, that that's kind of psychic garbage in my estimation well also you know there's there are things that those movies are trying to say and and there's especially a, artist, a serbian which, film i know it's but, actually but art. also you know I, it also depends on where you're at and where your mind is at etc you know like i mean we all rented even though we found out later on it was fake like we all snuck and rented faces of death for example. oh yeah we've all and, seen that and eventually i just was like you know what i kind of experienced that and i've kind of moved on i don't mean to, to like thumb my nose up or like oh i've like i as a teenager Been i there. also experienced that <laughs> like, but just <laughs> yeah. as far as like i that's not where my head is at and that's not the thing also you know you're talking about like i, I also you know we both had our share of tragedy like yeah if you've if you've experienced somebody in the hospital or in hospice let me tell you the it's always been scary but those scenes in pet cemetery where she's taking care of her sister will oh hit my you God. Yeah. in such a like so again when somebody says well i don't enjoy this rape revenge 
thing because myself or a friend of mine uh, experienced trauma, even if it wasn't as as traumatic as what's in the movie. I'm not going to tell them like what Get over it. Pussy. It's great, yeah. like, but it's such a good movie. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. 